Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint's Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. Mm. We are coming at you on March 24th. Uh, we're about, uh, gosh, almost two months into this Biden administration. We just kind of stumbling our way through it, uh, kind of kind of like Biden himself is doing as well. But uh, before we get into any of that, let me introduce you to our panelists. Uh, we're on a slightly different platform this time, so you may see a little bit of different changes. But uh, as I call them out there, they'll wave to you and uh, you'll, you'll get to see them. So uh, first, uh, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. Tim, you want to say something to the audience? Uh, hello, audience. Okay, there we go. That's our screaming eagle right there. <laughs> let's uh, let's jump to our other. Uh, oh, he he is a. By the way, he is a pilot in the state of California. Now let me jump to our other pi, our, our excuse me, our other pilot. <laughs> I almost promoted you to pilot, Leo. <laughs> I, I noticed. I noticed. Good lord, it scares me. <laughs> well, uh, this is Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. So, you want to say hi to the audience? Hey, audience. Remember, <laughs> life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness always. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, let's, let's uh, you know, speaking of, uh, I guess, things running counter to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, let's talk about Biden. <laughs> Biden uh, recently... Uh, um, I guess he's, uh, you know, he's, he's saying that maybe, just maybe, he, 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 you know, in a talk that he gave on uh, COVID the other day, he said, maybe if we all behave and wear masks, that eventually uh, he'll let us have some small gatherings for the 4th of July. So, you know, 4th of July, our, our celebration of liberty, and, and if we're good, mm -hmm. he might let us have a little. You guys want to jump in on that? Well, I'm sure he's following the science because um, the science must point to the 4th of July, you know, as a, as a particular day when every, the coast is clear and COVID is no longer a threat and we can meet in large groups because uh, we all know that if we follow science, that certain uh, national holidays are a major uh, part of the scientific uh, uh, formula. And uh, and so obviously uh, the Fourth of July is is one of those. You know, it, it's it's funny that our overlords have finally spoken, and since Biden came into came into office, of course they're going to save us from the COVID. And since they're going to save us from the COVID, I guess that gives them the right to destroy all our liberties in the name of saving us from <clears> that COVID. We're going to cut off our nose. You know, we're going to save our, our, our face by cutting off our nose. And Joe Biden, who just came along two months ago, I'm not sure he's even, he's even aware that he's in office right now because he seemed to be mistaken all the time about what administration he's in. The last time he said he was in the Harris administration. So I don't know if he knows that he's president of the United States, but he's going to save us from the COVID. I thought one of our founding documents clearly stated life, liberty, and the freedom to pursue happiness. I didn't know that our overlords have to tell us when we can have that liberty, when we can have those freedoms. I didn't know our overlords are going to do that. Joe Biden is out of his mind, both literally and figuratively. You just don't follow the science, Leon. That's all there is to it. Well, You're just I, I, a, a science yeah. denier. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tim. I didn't. I didn't learn that in school. You know, I'm a. I'm a, I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit well. queasy on those little fine, the finer points of our <laughs> existence here in the United States. You got to let Joe lip, uh, educate you. You know, like he's done so well <laughs> on, for example, uh, home defense with a shotgun. He's uh, done extremely well educating the American public on that. <laughs> Well, Leon, you know, I, I, you know, when you say yeah, the freedom for life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness, I'm sure Biden would tell you, you have the freedom to pursue oh. his ideas of life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. This is, this, <laughs> that that includes, like, I think, wearing three masks at a time as well. <laughs> this, this is just a point. Our overlords have spoken. So we should bow down and obey. Right. We should bow down and obey. If they said the way one mask, we should obey. Two, 
we should obey. Three, we should obviously obey. We're just going to get Dr. Fauci out there to come out and lie to us, and, they, and all the world will be free and wonderful for us here in the United States. Hmm. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's funny, too. Uh, you know, apparently his, uh, his ideas on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness include not allowing people to have fireworks at the uh, Mount Rushmore this year. And, you know, they, they did fireworks last year in South Dakota. And I, I don't recall hearing that, you know, being a huge issue. Uh, I know the Democrats were certainly uh, upset because Trump used that as a uh, sort of a, a, a big campaign push for himself. Uh, but, uh, you know, it just, uh, you know, I don't know. It, it, it just seems to be one of those things where, you know, Biden you know, wants to make sure that we celebrate the 4th of July in a way he approves of. You guys have any thoughts on the whole the whole uh, fireworks in Mount Rushmore? Well, uh, along, along with their wokeness, environmental impact is their, is their new religion. So they always have to come and tell us that we have to be careful that, you know, the fireworks may damage the environment. And then, of course, the people gathering, you know, of course, you know, that might be a problem with COVID. You know, people gathering to see this, this may cause COVID problems. All of these things are all based upon a bunch of hypocrisy that is unbelievable. Okay, we have had fireworks there. We have had it in the past. Nobody ever complained. The state of of of, of, uh, of South Dakota, which is led by a Republican, they never complained about the fireworks at, at Mount Russia. But all of a sudden, the Biden administration have come to power. They are now in charge. Oh my goodness gracious! The environmental impact is too much. The COVID, the COVID is going to cause problems. Oh, it's just too much. We just kind of, we have to save you guys from yourself. That's what we have to do. We just have to save you guys. Yeah. Any, any thoughts, Screaming Eagle? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, that time of the year, it's uh, in that area of the world where I, I'm pretty sure there's some forests and stuff like that. I don't know if they have any you know, fire codes and, and worries about uh, setting off a, a major forest fire. I don't, I don't know. I, I have read about that. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> it, it's a national monument. I, uh, I don't get all broken up about them um, not allowing a fireworks display honoring um, great presidents of the past and uh, so on, even though one of them is, is a favorite of mine, but uh, I, I'm not all busted up over it. But uh, on the other hand, if there is no fire danger and there is, you know, then it's, it's just the stuff that Leon's describing. I, I, I wish I knew more about it, but uh, I, it's all I can say. I mean, if it was some, some deep principle that was guiding this discussion, some deep principle of for whatever, Maybe there is really some some issue of of uh, potential fires or anything like that. I don't think there's any issue there, as far as I know, because we have done this in the past and we have never had an issue. Uh, if no. that was some, if the, if that was some some great guiding principle, but all of this thing is a bunch of wokeness and environmental impact issues. That's what they're raising as as a reason why we should not do it. I mean, okay, fine. Maybe there's something to be said about you know, not worshiping our past president or that kind of stuff. But there is something about that keeps us together. That day, Independence Day, is something that makes us all Americans. And I think it's worthwhile to celebrate it. Mm -hmm. But these woke people, I was almost used a cuss word, quite frankly. Thank God. These, <laughs> these woke people just have these ideas in their head that they're going to take us to this new utopia where everything will be nice and wonderful. And we don't celebrate. We don't celebrate our history. We don't celebrate ourselves as Americans. We don't celebrate our liberties, our freedoms, our values. We don't celebrate none of that, because they have this new utopia for us. And and but we just gotta destroy the present situation, so and so they could remake it in their image. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the one of the things too, as well with this, it just seems like. There's a, you know, we're going to do a show on cancel culture soon. And it seems like maybe some of this is just trying to cancel anything that had any remnant of Trumpism in it, you know, and yes. the fact that Trump 
campaign there you know it just seems like you know what well, gotta erase it you know? yeah, <laughs> just yeah. you know nothing to say but you know that on a tangent though there is uh you know freedom fest this year is going to be at mount rushmore so uh that's uh, sort of the uh, annual libertarian convention uh or, or convention of, of liberty-minded folks anyways uh and uh that's something i'm actually trying to uh see if i can get to this year so maybe we'll get a few images of freedom fest for you this year but that's going to be in late july after the fourth of july so uh, yeah. are, you, in, are you guys sure it's going to come off they're not going to find some reason to cancel that no COVID, in fact that that's that, that, that is why they moved it to south dakota this year usually this is a las vegas thing usually i think a lot of people associate las vegas with being able to sort of let your hair down and, and take a few liberties with things you might not be able to do in other places. But, right. uh, you know, but that's that's not the case this year in Las yeah. Vegas. <laughs> They've been uh, clamping down because of COVID, uh, you know, like a lot of other blue states. And so uh, they, they moved the convention this year specifically because of that. They wanted to be sure that they wouldn't have many restrictions. So they moved to South Dakota. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not sure what that means the future is for Freedom Fest, but that's that's where they're going to do it this year. So well, that, they'll have some. You know, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. I was just going to say I just hope Freedom Press survives this 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 incredible wokeness, this this nasty wokeness that is ongoing in our society. I really hope so. Well, they'll they'll have a few uh, notable people there. I know that the governor of uh, South Dakota is going to speak there. Uh, that uh, Christy Nome. Christy Nome. Christy Nome. Yeah, Christy Nome. And uh, Larry Elder and Dave Rubin and quite a few other, uh, 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 oh, uh, Tom Woods and, and quite a few other notables are going to be there as well. So, sure. uh, but but anyways, so let's let's jump back to uh, uh, some of the Biden mishaps. So, uh, <laughs> you know, there's this whole thing with COVID. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's kind of his, uh, I guess, claim to the presidency. You know, if it wasn't for the uh, chaos of COVID, he might not be there. And so. He's liking he, he likes to crow now about what a success he is with respect to COVID and, you know, kind of ignoring anything that might have been done before he got there. And of course, you know, this this kind of falls in with a little bit of his history of plagiarism, uh, <laughs> taking credit for a lot of things that he didn't really have anything to do with. And uh, one of the uh, you know notes on this is that the Surgeon General under Trump specifically came out and said that Biden's plan, you know, that Biden's trying to, you know, credit his plan for bringing vaccine to everybody. And uh, uh, Trump Surgeon General said, I am so tired of the continuing lies that at POTUS, meaning Biden, uh, inherited uh, a COVID vaccine mess, when in fact, 99% of current vaccine manufacturing distribution is exactly as planned and explicitly described by Trump administration's Operation Warp Speed. So again, looks like you know Trump, <laughs> or rather uh, Biden, Biden, you know, trying to take credit for things that that he didn't do, and the media just playing along with it this time. You guys have any mm. thoughts on that? Mm. You know, I'm not. Nah. I'm not much. I'm, I'm sorry, Tim. Go ahead, Tim. Go ahead. Uh, it's it's just tribalism. Uh, <clears throat> you know, um, we can't. <laughs> I mean. Uh, it, we've been tribal for our uh, vast majority of the, the eons on the planet, and it's embedded in our DNA to be tribal. And uh, so this is just tribalism on display. Um, the, the guy from your tribe is bad, and the guy from our tribe is good. And in this, the, the only main issue that um, I see is that it's uh, so one-sided with the media uh, not ever, you know, calling this idiot Biden on his um, plagiarism and his other nonsensical stuff that he comes up with. Whereas if it were a Republican, it could be a Republican chimpanzee. It wouldn't matter. It could be a Republican donkey. Well, now that was uh, elephant. And uh, <laughs> nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I, but there, there are some Republican donkeys too, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're called the, the jackasses, I guess. But uh, yes, yeah, so the um, yeah, the, it's just that this um, this media um, favoritism toward anybody with a Democrat uh, moniker is uh, is just so so obvious uh, to everyone. Um, so there you have it. You know, I'm I'm not into much into these uh, public private partnerships, but 
we cannot deny the success of Operation Warp Speed. We just cannot deny it, okay? The reason why yeah, I'm yeah. not into these public-private partnerships is because the public, which is, which is the government, usually takes over the whole situation and they usually make a mess of it. But mm -hmm. Donald Trump did a great thing. Let's give him credit. I mean, okay, fine, he had all his problems. But he did a great thing with his vaccine business, okay, in operate, in, with Operation Warp Speed. And now Joe Biden, apparently he had forgotten that before he even took office, he got the vaccine, both, both, and both doses, before he took office. So he had forgotten that. Poor Joe. He can't even remember his name, I guess, on some days. I don't know. But he's really having a problem. But Joe has a long history of plagiarism, just as both of you guys have said. In, in I think it was in the 1988 presidential campaign, I believe, he was pretending to, he took the speech of Neil Kinnock, who is some British Labour Party guy, oh, about these thousands, thousands of years, they were in the coal mines and that kind of stuff. All of a sudden, Joe started to talk about the Bidens being in the coal mines for all these thousands of years and all this kind of stuff and things like that. So plagiarism is nothing new for him. So all of a sudden now, we are seeing some real success because of the vaccines. It is true. I mean, we're seeing uh, infection rates are, are, are declining, hospitalization rates are declining. But all of a sudden, we want to hear now, oh, Joe came to office and everything is changing and everything is becoming wonderful. Joe is going to lead us to the utopia. But all the hard work was done through Operation Warp Speed, which is still in effect, which is still working and doing a, a hell of a good job, even though I personally am not into these public-private partnerships. But this has to go down in history as one of the greatest connections and operations that I've ever done between the public and the private and private enterprise. And it is working fantastic. And we should give Donald, Donald Trump credit for its operation. I really think we should, even though he had his problems, but I think we should give him credit for it. Yeah, 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 that, those are good points. Thank you. Well, and, and, and much as with uh, with the whole Mount Rushmore thing, they, the Democrats just want to erase him <laughs> at his <laughs> contribution <laughs> from <laughs> anything that he possibly could have done that might be seen in a positive light just yes. somehow didn't happen. And it's attributed to you know, yeah. some, some lefty somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it is, you know, funny though. I mean, I think one of the dangers of this though, is, is looking at, you know, Trump or Biden and this hero worship that people have of, you know, Hey, yes. we need the good King and good leader will make everything well. And, you know, a fair amount of, you know, there, there, there is some amount of vaccines. That's an issue of a public good, you know, that, uh, uh, but you know, that there also as well, um, is, is a fair amount of government hindrance of, of these things as well. I mean, some of what Trump did is just trying to get government out of the way of some of these things. Right. And exactly. so, you know, to sit here and say, wow, what a great job government did this time, when, when half the time government is just standing in the way. You know, we just get government to do a good job of getting out of the way. We can actually get some of these things done a little bit faster. Um, but I think we have said many times, and many times on this show, we have said government does one thing and very efficiently. That is the creation of misery. That's all they ever do. And this was one of the things that Donald Trump did was cutting out some of the regulation, cutting out some of the red tape and all that kind of stuff that really have really done some good things for the economy. It really have. And with this Operation Warp Speed in particular, one of the things that they were able to do was to remove a lot of the red tape involving clinical trials and all the kind of stuff, all of the regulations that they have to go through. That is why the vaccines were developed inside of a inside of a year. So this was a good thing of getting government out of the way so that the private enterprise can do it can do its work, which is to produce goods and services for our use. In this case, the vaccine. So this is something that you 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 just have to credit Donald Trump for. But these people, they will never do that. Because as well, far when, as they're concerned, Donald Trump is the reincarnation of the devil. Well, the hypocrisy as well, because while Trump was president, uh, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden were, were I, I believe Joe Biden was also there. I know, I know Kamala Harris was. They were skeptical of taking a vaccine that was exactly. generated under the Trump administration. Exactly. Now they're, they're trying to jump in front of the parade and act like they caused it. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it really is just, you know, uh, uh, a mind job that, they're, that they continue to do with the help of, of the mainstream media. Well, you know, yeah, even, 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 I'm sorry, Tim, go ahead, Tim, I'm sorry. 
I'm just going to say it's apparently working the mind job uh, uh, because so many people are just willing to uh, lockstep uh, behind yes. it. Uh, and it could be, you know, it could be a lot of the mind jobs that are always going on in the background. But anyway, that's that's it. Go ahead, Leon. <clears throat> no, I was just going to say it's just that during the debate uh, that Kamala had with, um, with Vice President Pence, she said, oh, if the scientists say the vaccine is good, then I'll take it. But if Donald Trump says it is good, I'm not going to take it. What does she think? Donald Trump was in the basement, in the basement of the White House, developing the vaccine for himself. Yeah. I mean, it's so ridiculous. Yeah. And this woman is vice president of the United States right now. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. and it, you know, it's just terrible. You know, I mean, all of this, uh, I guess, blue leadership that we've had during this time into uh, essentially taking away our liberties and and such. Uh, uh, you know, I think Tim, I think this was one you sent in, so I don't know if you want to you know, key in on this one, but, you know, apparently, you know, that some of this may have, have, have been spurred uh, in the state of Washington, I guess, some of this COVID spread uh, through mismanagement policies of their blue state governor. I mean, we had, you know, the explosion oh, in New York yeah. and then under the management of Cuomo, Michigan has apparently had a, a lot of similar failures. California has certainly had its share of woes with, you know, COVID, especially hitting the economy. But, uh, uh, you know, you want to tell us a little bit about what went on in Washington? Uh, uh, that requires that I remember it fully. <laughs> um, boy, oh, boy. Uh, I, I do recall that it was uh, something in the neighborhood of what uh, Washington being close to uh, that. That's part of the world, the Pacific Rim. And they were, you know, bringing things in from China. And so a lot of the COVID um a lot of the COVID transfers originally began there, which you would expect, you know, that's on the, uh, you know, on the, the closest or one of the closer uh, seaboard uh, points to, uh, to China. And so uh, that's all I recall about that. And then, yeah, uh, how, how they handled it. I, uh, I wish I knew. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I, kind of, I kind of messed up on that one. Oh, that's okay. I think, okay. No, no, I, I think, I think Leon actually came up with that one. But it wasn't oh, me okay. at all. I thought that was you. Was Leon, was that you? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. Oh, I'm no, sorry. No, but the, 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 the point of this, though, is many of these blue state governors, many of them, okay, well, several of them, I should say, because Jay Ensley in, um, in Washington, um, Whitmer in, in, in Michigan, Murphy in New Jersey, and Como, the big daddy of them all, in New York, they all did the same thing, essentially the same thing. They took these, these elderly folks, put them into nursing homes, and they're COVID positive, and they end up killing a bunch of people. You know, some of these people should go to prison, if you want the honest truth, okay? Some of these should really, really go to prison. Washington started off this thing, which is true, what Tim was talking about. They started off this thing. But they furthered the, the problem. They exacerbated the problem by putting elderly folks who were infected into nursing homes. From there, we had a bunch of people dying in, in the nursing homes. The COVID spread all over the country. And then, of course, we have our big daddy, Mr. Como, 15,000 people dead as a result of this man. Now, some of those people, in fairness to him, some of these people may have died because of the COVID anyway. Some of them may, may have died. But that 15,000 people, they didn't have to be. Maybe half of that or maybe a quarter of that did not have to die. We, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let me keep quiet right now because I think we need to go to a um, nuclear noise patrol. <laughs> yes, that's the back. There's the sound of uh there's the sound of that knucklehead noise patrol coming in right now. So uh, we always used to, uh, we always like to end off our show with something kind of uh, comical or funny to, to get us in a good mood as we leave. And as we talk about mismanagement and ineptness of blue states, that brings us right back to putting Cuomo on center stage, <laughs> a governor Cuomo of New York. And, uh, you know, during Trump's administration, the media was just sort of all love and hugs and kisses with Cuomo, uh, telling him what a great job he did to the point where some of the people were starting to call themselves Cuomo sexuals. <laughs> so, and so we had the uh, Trevor Noah, uh, the, uh, I guess he's the host of, uh, of one of the comedy shows on Comedy Central. Uh, he had actually uh, uh, dubbed himself a Cuomo sexual. 
Uh, and, and, you know, now this is gonna, you know, something they kind of have to back off on because they've had <laughs> eight women come forward saying he sexually harassed them, <laughs> aside from the scandal that he has supposedly <laughs> killed a lot of people, you know, uh, allegedly killed a lot of people in old folks' homes <laughs> with yes. his policies uh, yes. that his uh, attorney general has come out uh, uh, blowing the lid off of. Uh, but uh, let, let me give you the quote of what Noah said. He said specifically, everyone should be a quomosexual in that way. Uh, you should love a leader who engages the people and remembers that they're serving the people as opposed to uh, the people working for them. It genuinely has been very inspiring and refreshing to see a leader like Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, who has come out and engaged his uh, briefings in a non-political way. He's engaged them as a leader. He's engaged them as a human being. He's also taken the blame for things. <laughs> it just gets so absurd just reading this, <laughs> where he says, look, I understand I'm doing certain things that people will hate me for, and I'm willing to make these decisions because I think it's best uh, the best thing for human life first. Uh, we can always create business afterwards. I think he's informative. I think he's informed. And that's the, you know, Trevor Noah's take on <laughs> Cuomo, along with that, yeah. a lot of other people on the left. Because you remember the Emmys got in on it. And exactly. Exactly. Talk uh, about, you, talk yeah. about hero worshiping. Talk about hero worshiping. Oh God, Cuomo is the best thing next to sliced bread. And you could even get some peanut butter and jelly on that bread too. It's, it, oh, it's also wonderful. Only problem is one little problem. The 15,000 people died, they didn't get a message. That they should be worshiping Andrew Cuomo. They didn't get the message. They got it got lost along the way. These people are so ridiculous in their assertions. These celebrities should just shut up. I just wish they would just shut up and keep quiet. Go back to their little acting, which some of them have some skills at. Go do that. Trevor Noah is a pretty decent comedian, but he should shut up sometimes. Please do. Oh God. <laughs> Apparently, he was making some decisions for some female members of his staff and and associates uh, as well that maybe he's going to catch some heat for. But I, I don't think he was thinking about those decisions. But now they've come up, come, apparently, I, you know, who knows? Who knows these people? Um, they're so corrupt. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I've, I've been called because I'm a gun nut, one of those um, whack, whack jobs uh, that, that uh, want everybody to die from gun violence, of course. Um, so I've been called an ammo sexual, but... <laughs> Anyway, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, that was that was that was the last time I heard that. That was the first time I ever heard that word, Tim. I didn't know yeah. that you were homosexual. Thanks for letting Emma. me know. You know, <laughs> yes, homosexual. <laughs> I get excited around ammo. That's what they say. <laughs> I love it. Well, now, now that we know this about you, we'll definitely keep our eye on you and your explosive pro proclivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. explosive character. You know, we've, we've, got to, we've got to be careful. <laughs> I'll try to be discreet. Okay. <laughs> well, well, much as uh, the, the governorship of Andrew Cuomo is likely to come to an end, our show has to come to an end as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> so we've reached about the end of our time, but uh, thank you for joining us today for Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast, and we hope you'll join us again for the next one. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast, a production of Libertarian Counterpoint. Watch our shows each week on Comcast Channel 17 in Sacramento, Monday at 5.30 p.m. and Thursday at 8 p.m.